This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. So, <clears throat> tonight is uh, Tu Bishvat, which is why you have all these um, fruits in front of you that you should be making a. Oh, yes. My mom's What's the name? Uh, what's her name? Frida Bas David Zayde. Frida Bas David Zayde. Yeah. Right. This is lecture and everything. The, way, she was like the, the last words before she passed away and my dad, what, what is going on in Israel? Oh, really? Because Israel was for them, it's like forever. Yeah. And even your lecture about Israel... About it matches work exactly. It yeah. will be, yes. I yeah. would be very appreciated if you of course. say that it's, it's your name. This class was, uh, was for Leilu Nishmat Frida... Frida. Frida. Bad Duvid Zayda. The Nishama Shav and Aliyah should go Mechayel Chal. She keep it going higher and higher. Um, the... <coughs> and, and it's... You know... So when you're dealing with uh, Tu um, Bishvat over here, you have... Um, you know, we spoke about this on Shabbat, so I don't want to go, we're going to speak only about a few, a few minutes on this, because we spoke, we spent a lot of time on this on Shabbat. The, <clears throat> you know, this is the time that we sort of celebrate, this is the New Year's for the tree. Bless you. Exactly. This is, uh, this is the, the New Year of the tree. The idea behind it, though, is very interesting, because you have, first of all, why? Let's, let's back it up. Why do we do this? So, the, when, when the Bet HaMikdash was destroyed, the Jewish people used to bring Bikurim. They used to bring first fruits. Now they cannot bring the first fruits because there's no Bet HaMikdash. So on Tu Bishvat, we, we raise our fruits through blessings. That's why you take all the fruits, all the Shavaminim, and you take and make a blessing on it to raise the fruit to a higher level as opposed to what we used to do back then in the Bet HaMikdash. We would bring the, the fruits up, the first Bikurim, the fruits up into the, in the Kolpan, and then or you would eat it over there, and that would be the, the raising of the level of the fruits. Now we do it a little bit differently. We do it by saying blessings. And that's, that is why we're, that's really why we're, we're celebrating over here. The part that I spoke a little bit about Shabbat, and I want to I just touch upon over here that I didn't speak about Shabbat, is why now? Why not make it, you know, so we gave an answer on, on Shabbat, a long answer. Why not make it in the summer? Why, not, why are we doing it specifically now? So, there are very interesting things when you're dealing in, in Judaism and, and what you are, you know, and I'll give you an example. Like, let's, let's back it up a little bit. You walk out on the street, it's freezing. The fruits, the, the trees don't forget about fruits. They don't have leaves on them. So, and now we're like, okay, here's the New Year for the, um, you know, for the trees. When you can celebrate it, right? I think we gave an example of Black History Month. Get the coldest month, the shortest month of the year. That's where we're going to celebrate Black History Month. Why not July? A nice, you know, long, hot, you know, hot month. Why are we celebrating over there? I don't know. You know, it bothers me. They should have a long month. I don't know what, what they're doing. It. Why, why, why they get the shortest month? Um, they should celebrate the whole month. But, uh, um... So why you put it specifically in, in, the, you know, in the winter, in the middle, when you don't see the trees, you don't see them blossoming, you don't see anything. So in uh, Judaism, there is a lot to, that we speak about potential. Potential of a person speaks a lot about it. Now, not always does potential count unless you actually utilize your potential. And the idea of it is, think of it like this. Think of it that you have, um, you have... In, uh, during this time of the year, during this actually today, is when the, the sap of the tree starts going inside the tree. Now we don't see it, it goes, it, you know, it's going from the inside, it goes into, inside the tree and it goes up. And it, this is like the beginning process of the fruits that are producing. So this is where it actually begins. Now, there are many times in life that we start something. All, all beginning things are very difficult. Whether it's you're fresh to religion, whether it's a new business, the beginning is very difficult. You spend a lot of time in it because you're planting the seeds. This is where things, you don't see anything happening yet. The sap is just growing inside over there. But all of a sudden, the same idea with learning to walk. When you learn to walk, in the beginning, you're like, what? I, like, you know, like you don't understand like most of it. Like, uh, what's going on over here? But as you learn, all of a sudden things start coming together. So in the beginning, it's like the potential. Everything is there and it's slowly growing and growing and growing and growing. All of a sudden, then you start blossoming, then you start having the fruits, then you have the pelot, then you're going to be able to start appreciating it when you actually go and you actually pull through with it. But it all begins in that difficult beer time when you don't see any leaves, you don't see any fruit, you don't see anything, it's just a sap that's growing inside and everyone's freezing and everyone's cold and everyone's interested, but yet this is where, this is where, it, be, this is where it all begins. The, you look at a tree, a tree has, in order for it to stand, it's, you know, 
it, the roots have to be very, very deep and very, very strong. The bigger the tree, the stronger the roots. So what you see is not all what it is. It actually goes a lot more further down there. And this, you know, there are some people that um, they know very little, but they talk a lot. They don't stop talking. And then when they open their mouth, you realize how little they know. That's not the, that's not the you look at Pilkei Avod, it brings us down also. The way that, that Judaism is, is that you know a lot, you say a little. <laughs> when you speak a lot, that means you know a little. The, the, there's a, the, you know, when, you're, when you're dealing in, you know, this whole thing of gava, of like arrogance. Be like, you know, every, I'll give you an example like this. And it doesn't bother, it used to bother me. Baruch Hashem, I worked on myself, it doesn't bother me. I'll say a story or a joke. And there's always one person in the back who maybe heard the story, heard the joke. The person that didn't punch out before, the, before, you know, like, they quickly, like, like you know, like, why the chicken across the right? other side. I got it. I win. I, I, I success. I love, I win. I'm the best. But, like, what did you gain from that? Like, you gain absolutely nothing. No, 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 but I feel like I did something. Because you have nothing inside you, and you don't have anything, so you want to feel part. So you, you contributed, uh, you know, something over here. So, because of that, you feel like you have, you have nothing, and all of a sudden now, you feel like you're something. So this is, is you know, this is, this is one lesson that we can learn from, from the trees. You learn from the trees that just like it grows, it, it has more on the bottom than more than on the top, so too more, you have to, you have to fi- you know, finalize all your knowledge that you have. Everything that you have should be in, inside. Not everything has to be out in the public. You know, you do a good deed, you don't have to slap your name on every single, you know, place over there. You go to some, Baruch Hashem, it's donated and it's great. But you go to some synagogues, you know, every picture frame is donated by, you know, this family. And, it, and it's great. I'm not, I'm not saying against that. You could do that. But, like, that's not what, that, that's not the purpose of, of things. You know, like, okay, I'll, I'll give you a million dollars for the building, but I want my name on it. But, like, why would you waste, why would you waste your mitzvah t- for that, for that, t- you know, type of uh, a mitzvah? Now, it's something very interesting that, this we're dealing with is potential right now. We're dealing with potential at this point in time. You don't, you don't get reward for just your potential. You actually have, depends on what you actually accomplish. It, it, the Moshe um, Rabbeinu, you know, it's, um, I forgot which parasha it is. We spoke about this a few Shabbatot ago, that it doesn't say who his parents were, only until after he started, you know, like taking the Jews out of, out of, uh, um, out of Egypt. And the question is, why? Why don't you tell us this, this earlier? Because when Moshe came out, he was, you know, like, he was like beaming, you know, like, it, it, this was going to be a special child. This guy was going to take, this was, he had potential for everything. But just because you have potential for something doesn't necessarily mean that you're going you're to accomplish. There are many um, people that are geniuses. I, I speak to some people that are so smart. They're, they're like, they're a genius. I'm like, if you would put your mind to Torah, you would gain so much. I always say, like, imagine what would happen if Einstein was religious and he learned Ma'ah. We would have, you know, there's so much Sfarim, extra Sfarim now. A genius mind like that, he had so much potential. There are so many people now that have so much potential to attribute a lot. But guess what? Just because they might be a good talker, they might be, um, you know, they might have a good head, they might be able to go, there are some people that are, good, that are people persons. And they're able to bring a lot of people to classes. But they don't, for some reason. They have the potential for do it, but they don't do it. What a waste. You don't get credit for that. Be like, yeah, I was a good businessman. I was able to close a lot of deals. Big whoop, you know, you know, who cares? You know, like, you know, there are many people that don't know how to talk and close big deals. You're attributing that to yourself. Here, you, we, when, you, could, uh, when you, could, you can say that your potential, you lived up to your potential, when you actually work on it. So you're great at something, do it for the good. Don't just use it for, you know, for, for yourself, for selfish reasons. The, this is why only after Moshe started using his potential, that's when it says, oh, you know who his parents were? That's who his parents were. Only once he used it, because beforehand, it doesn't mean anything. So big deal, you're a big doctor. You're a big lawyer. You're very smart. There, it's, it's, it's such a shame. I knew people, you know, in, in, uh, in college, you know, I, I knew, you know, people I'm talking about, they went to Harvard Law School, they went to Columbia Law School. They were geniuses in the Torah. And now, it's very, it's, it's a shame. I, you know, I see them. The kippah gets smaller and smaller, and it gets hidden behind, you know, as, you know, as depending on when the ball, you know, whatever, you got to, you know, strategically plan it. And, uh, you know, these people could have been huge. They could have been huge. And now they're, they're huge lawyers. They had the potential, but they didn't use it. Now we learn, this is where the potential is. The potential is now. The potential is, in, in, you know, to be shot. The sap is going up over there. The sap is climbing up the tree now, and it's, and it's producing everything. But guess what? If, if you don't water it, if you don't give it enough, enough if it doesn't have enough sunlight, it's never going to produce anything. It's, never, it's just going to be a tree with, the, you know, sap inside, or it's going to die, or whatever it is. It is a time to wake up. It is a time to think about it. It's time to realize, you know what? Let me do something with my potential. No one can say that I have no... Um, no abilities, no, no good, what's the word I'm looking for? 
Someone help me with English. What? Qualities. qualities. Yes, thank you. No, no, I have no good qualities that I can contribute. Everybody has something. They all have something. You could do something good. You have the potential for it. It's in you. Everybody has the ability to become... Listen, you might not, you know, produce a theory of relativity. You might, you might not be a Moshe Feinstein and produce a Goth Moshe. You're not, you might not get to that, but you could get to something. The potential is, is, you know, when you see it, it's going to be difficult at the beginning. You, you, never, you, know, you never catch a bot before. You, never, you, know, you never kept kosher. It's very difficult. It's in the beginning. But when you plant the seeds, you're going to see a beautiful tree that's going to sprout from it. And you know what's beautiful in it? The children is known, we know, you know, uh, from, the, from, from our scriptures, that, that the, the, the Ilan Ila, you know, how, how beautiful is your, is your fruit, that it should be just like you. The fruits are known as to be the children. When you change something, when you use your potential, you're giving power to your children. You're giving power to the future generations to be just like you and to, and to utilize your potential. Don't be what, so many of those people that fail to utilize it. They fail it. It's so bad. It's so sad. I find I, so many people that are great. They're great in so many different things and they just squander their way at video games or like some stupid, stupid things. Completely waste their life. Do something for somebody else. If there's one thing that you learned today, at least take this. Take this to heart. Take your quality. If you don't have one, create one. It's not difficult. You could create it. You don't know how to, you know, how to, how to get a Jew closer to Judaism? Bring him to a class. Send him a class. Do something. Buy him a book. I don't know. Give him a hug. Do, do something. There's, some people just need that, by the way. Some people are so angry. I hate God. I hate this. Uh, you know, it, all they need is a hug. Now, don't do that nowadays because you're going to lead into a lot of problems. Um, you know... First of all, they'll put, like, what are you touching me? You know, like, you know, I'm talking about two adults right now, right? I, you know, <laughs> um, so it's, but some people just need love and attention. That's all they need. It's not, I, I've had people that come, you know, you know like they're, uh, you know, against God. They hate God. And it has nothing to do with being against God, being hating God. They're just, they just need some attention. They just need some love and attention. And if that's what you give to somebody else, that's good also. Just, I have to emphasize this. Don't give there's some people that just, they think that they're doing good, so they bring them down. I'll give you an unfortunate uh, scenario that happened. Um, someone came and asked me that what should, um, what should she do? Somebody that she knows was, um, you know, came over to her and was committing one of the worst sins possible. She was a married woman and she was committing one of the worst sins possible. So I, she's like, what should I tell her? I'm like, tell her that if she doesn't fix it and doesn't do tshuva, she's going to a very, very hot place for a very, very long time. And she's going to go through tremendous suffering both in this world and the next world. And then she was like, uh, can I say something else? Like, is there like something else? I'm like, what do you want to say? Like, you know how this came out? Because this woman who was committing this sin went over to a friend and she was sad and she, she was hurt because her, you know, her outside marriage relationship, you know, decided doesn't want to be with her anymore. And she, she was very hurt by it. It was, you know, bothered her. And it was very sad. And uh, she wanted some comfort. I'm like, no, you don't comfort her. Be like, it's good that he broke up with you. Are you kidding me? Every time you're doing that, it's a, it's a huge sin. You know, very people, people think, okay, they need the comfort right now. No, it's okay if you don't keep Shabbat. Don't worry about it. It's okay, you know, you'll find another man. Forget about your husband. Don't worry about it. You know, you'll find another man. There's so many people that are looking for the right one, and they're still married. I'm like, they're still looking for the right one after they're married. You know, this is the, this is the day and age that, that unfortunately, we're, we're living with. Um, as I... I was once speaking to a guy about uh, guarding his eyes and I said, I'm like, you're married. There's no, like a single person, even though it's not a real excuse, they'll say, okay, I'm looking at, you know, because maybe I'll find the, you know, the right one. So he tells me, he says, no, maybe I'll also find the right one. <laughs> I'm like, tell that to your wife, please. Yeah. <laughs> See how that works out, uh, you know, for you. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. I digest. I die, whatever. Any, any questions? No questions? Nothing? Everyone has answers. I have questions. Can I ask you guys questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have you have a lot of rabbis that contributed a lot to math, science, and you know, like, and where did they read about this? I don't know. The restrooms. This is where they read. You know, you have you know, some people read People magazine. Other people read you know astrobiology. I don't know astrophysics. You know, like you know things. Uh, you know, and that. And they contribute a lot to society like that way. It's a hundred percent. A hundred percent. You have people that that are learning to all the, when you learn to all, uh, I'm talking about real Torah. You learn Gemara, you learn this, you know, not like, you know, you know, class with the stories. No, you know, I try to entertain also, unfortunately. But if you're talking about like real halakha, Torah, you know, learn how everything comes in, you know how sharp your brain is? I, you know, I speak both to like, um, 
you know, from the religious, from that, the way the thought process, the yeshiva system 100% works. It cha- the thought process, completely different. You have people, you know, like, you know, I speak to public school kids and I speak to people that went through yeshiva. You can't even understand it. You know, they both ask great questions. They both ask good questions. They're both very smart. They're both intelligent. But the thought process is so different. You have over here, you have the, for example, the public school system. Do they ever be like, okay, you know, like, here's the math. Why don't you guys break off into groups and discuss the theories of math uh, amongst each other? No, they'll never do that. In yeshiva, when you're even little, you go and you have chavutas. You go and the rabbi gives you, okay, you're going to learn this page of Gemara, and now go figure it out amongst yourselves. Do you ever have, like, you know, I don't know, a math professor be like, gives you a bunch of manuscripts from, like, I don't know, from some ancient mathematicians. Here, go figure it out, and then we'll recalculate, you know, back, and we'll figure it out all together, and I'll tell you how you guys figured it out. And yeah, some of the words you're not going to know, use a uh, Aramaic, you know, Swedish dictionary. <laughs> they don't do that. They just give the information, give the information, give the information. By 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you're done. I don't know what they do for the next eight hours. Um, and th- that's it. In yeshiva, I, I remember in high school, I would come home some nights at 11 o'clock. I would pass out. It was like it was going. It's like being in the army. You know, pass out, wake up at six, and go back again. And then your brain is like constantly like, you know, working. You know, over here, and you start wondering why the Jews contribute so much to science and all that. Maybe America's system, public school system is not ain't working for it. You know, why are everybody so obese? You know, you're not doing anything for like you're in school for like four hours a day, six hours a day. No, how, how long is school is over for some people? There was a guy in 12th, 11th grade public school, he, some, he chooses his classes. He's done it at 10 o'clock. <laughs> Look, that's not school. Like, you should not be allowed. To cho- you know, you're still a child. Go back to school. Who's your supervising you? Uh, You'd be like, well, how am I going to buy weed if someone's going to supervise me? You know, I, you know, what do you do all day? Play video games. What do you tell me? Something duty. Uh, you know, like, he plays a, how, how long can you play that, that video game for? I don't know, 12 hours? I speak to other people. Oh, other losers are doing this also. Okay, great. You know, you're sitting there for 12 hours playing nothing. What did you do today? I, it was an amazing day. I passed like four levels. It's unbelievable. You know, there are people that go insane when their mother breaks their Xbox, PlayStation, I don't know, whatever. That's what's current now. I know that's what's current. I know there might be new stuff. Some Nintendo Switch, you know. I don't know. It's like, yeah. I do research. I, I know a little bit. Um, there's some other things. I, I, you know, I don't know. I'm talking about the days when Sega Genesis, you know, I know Nintendo 64. That's when the, you know, you know, good graphics means that you could see the ball flying, you know, as opposed to like it, you know. And then when it freezes, you got to blow on all the cartridges to, to get it to get it back alive. It, you know, this is, you know, you're looking at it and you're wondering why nobody reaches their potential and why somebody does reach their potential. Playing 12 hours a day, you know, NBA, uh, I don't know, FIFA 20. Uh, Come on, someone help me out over here. 2K17. 2K17. Is that basketball? 18. 2K, 2K18. You're playing, playing 2K18. It is Baruch Hashem. You know, for eight hours, this is, you know, you know this, this also explains why Japan is, like, way ahead of us. You know, you could buy, like, fresh fruit in, like, vending machines in Japan. You know, what could you buy over here? Here, how about something that has a thousand saturated fat and, you know, another thing, you just, you just a blob of fat. Just, you know, stuff it in your face, obese kid. I heard about Japan, I, I don't know how true it is. I heard, um, I saw somebody, he was telling me about how we had a theory that Japan, within a couple of centuries, will probably go extinct. Really? Why is that? Japan, Japan, Japanese people, because they're so focused on work and everything that they... They don't have any personal life. Personal life. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. Well, they're productive. You see, and look at that. Like the Jewish people are are also very busy, but they also have a lot of kids. So it's like you know the thing that you don't understand. For example, the greatest Christians are priests. Who now have any children? We got to cut off the smart genes right away in its track. So who you know the Jewish people? Everybody has kids over here. So you look at you know it, it's. You look at the world, when you look at the world from an outside perspective, it's no comparison. Like, you look at it, it's comical to a certain extent. It's comical to what, what it is. It, it, when you're inside, it's very, very difficult to see. But when you, when you pull out for a second, and you look how different religion, different cults, different societies go and function, it's, it's, it's so funny how things work in one place and doesn't work in another place. Like in North Korea, 
they probably think everything is normal there. You know, like, uh, I, I would hope not, but maybe they would. You look at other places in the world, you don't appreciate You go to third world countries, you don't appreciate what you have. It, it's a shame. Anyways, I digress and I'm way over. Any other questions before we close off? No other questions? No other questions? You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.